Hi, and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, something a little bit different. I actually went racing with my PR Racing SB401 Type R, and I've just did a few upgrades off camera. I just put a reef servo in it to match what I had in my B6.4, as I'm a big fan, really love them. So I'm gonna show you a couple of races using my new camera. Now I'm gonna show you qualifying three and then the final. This went better than expected. So I'm third away, there we go, I'm pulling away. Now I've done some other upgrades to the car since you've last seen it. I actually swapped out all the turnbuckles to titanium. So that went from 1584 grams for the kit ones down to 7.99 grams. That saved me 7.85 grams, taking the car down to 1603 grams. The BRCA minimum weight for a four wheel drive is 1588. So the car is overweight, well over the minimum weight by 15 grams. But I do plan to change the titanium hexes and maybe some titanium wheel nuts. Also I've got one or two bolts that I need to change to titanium that I just didn't have at the time. So that should get me down to the minimum weight. Now, if you've been paying attention to my position, I was lucky enough to get some free air because I got into basically first place as the other two drivers had a mistake, which was great so that it gave me plenty of space to just settle down and try and put in some even laps. Now, there's a few parts of this track that the car really loves. And when I saw the layout for this, on the group forum I knew that it would be really good because of the long powering straight and the big turn at the bottom. I really like driving this car like here it's mighty down here and it turns in beautifully also the brakes on this because of the ESC that I've got in it are fantastic. Anyway back to the qualifying and I know what you're thinking what happened to lap 3, 4 and 5 if this is a good run? Uh, yeah we'll skip over that silly little mistakes but you do see that silly little mistakes can really burn into your time. Now lap six, that was a bit better at 14.02. So the car does have the pace in it. It's just down to me. Now the only upgrades left to do on this, which I'm struggling to do at the moment, is I'm trying to get hold of some alloy steering set for it. But in the UK, they're currently sold out everywhere. Now I did find one outside the UK, but of course once you add the import tax, handling fee and everything, it ends up being almost a hundred pound upgrade. So I'm gonna wait until it becomes available in the UK again, and then I'll probably do that. <laughs> Now, if you didn't hear that, my time is currently having me sitting in second place. So let's see if I can claw it back to be the fastest in the qualifying. Now on that call, that means uh, my time has put me into the first position and now watch the pressure ramp and a few silly mistakes happen. Yeah, pressure. Hmm. We look at the timing sheet, lap 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and now 11 have all been in the 14s which is nice and consistent and this is the key to setting some good overall times is to keep your laps consistent without making crazy mistakes. As you can see if you look at lap 3 to 5 the difference in time really does cost you. Now the car jumps well, it's very well mannered. Also through that section there, I can power all the way through. Down the straight, lovely. Turning in, it will turn in for me under power. Here it's a little bit twitchy. You can see my rear tires are starting to go off as the back just kicked round then. But it's well mannered, so it's not like I just spin out of control. Now the way that the boost is set up on the car currently, it's coming in a little bit too late for this. I could have pushed it forward a little bit to get it to really punch out of that corner, but because of the two little kick ups, I think if I had it kick in a little bit too early, the <laughs> nose would just rise too much and I'd just flip over. So I ended up just leaving it as it is. But when I was driving it, I could feel it waiting for the boost to kick in. Down the straight here, you can see it's mighty fast. I'm trying to hug as close to the apex as possible, but my driving skill is not that good, so I have to kind of try and leave a little bit of a margin. So the last 10 laps have been fantastic, and for me, being this consistent, it's something you just don't see very often. Then I had a little bit of a bump with Charlie, as he was a back marker. Yeah, I'd just like to say that Charlie was actually a back marker for once. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often in my races with it. <laughs> Right, let's see if I can keep the next few laps as clean as the previous 10. 
Not sure about that. We'll just have to wait and see. I think you'll find that the end is probably the best part to stick around for. <laughs> oh, there was a car on the straight. That was close. Right, over the kickers, turning in. Loads of power. The car flies through the air, is well mannered when it lands, and then you can just power through that whole section. Now we're coming around to finish. Can I push on and get actually 21 laps? I'd be super chuffed as the last qualifying, I only got 20. So we push on, trying not to make any mistakes. I'm leaning on it a little bit more now, and we come around to <laughs> what can only describe as an incident. I think I damaged my car though. <laughs> I hit that bloody corner. <laughs> so luckily I hadn't actually broken anything but I had bent two of the top suspension bolts so I bent them back into place which will do until I can replace them and we can carry on now I find myself in the A final not only that I'm in third I know right uh, more of a surprise to me than you right let's see how this is gonna go and I get the feeling it's not gonna go quite as well as the qualifying you've just seen <laughs> you're not the only one <laughs> we should have plenty of marshals for this one so we need them <laughs> So here we go and the plan of the start is to try not to get too bundled into by everybody else and try and keep it as clean as possible. Yeah, uh, spoilers, not as clean as you might think. So we're off and up onto the tabletop. We come off the tabletop. It's a little bit argy. I try to go on the inside and then I clip a load of people. Now I'm currently sitting in third place and Charlie's right behind me. He's coming round to pass me and then there's a little bit more argy bargy and I sit in third currently, but the pressure's on and there's no way I can keep this pace up. And then I punch Charlie clean off. Yeah, sorry about that, mate. And then I'm still sitting in third place, but things have calmed down a little bit. We spread out a little bit now. Can I hold on to third place? Now, everybody feels like they're really fast, and I've got to remember to try and keep out of the way of the really fast people in front of me, but then try not to let the really fast people behind me get in front of me like that. One silly mistake dropped me down. I'm now down into fifth place. Yeah, not great, huh? Third to fifth. Anyway, carry on. Let's try not to get the nerves too high and not push too hard. It's always the classic thing if you want to go faster, so you push harder, make more mistakes, and then you go slower. Now, as I come round to complete lap four, I notice the bright neon yellow car that's out. Now, I'm not sure there's two of them on the track. One is ahead of me and one is behind, so I'm not sure where that puts me. But I'm pretty sure when I look back, I think it's the person who's behind me, so I haven't changed any positions. I'm still up, still, still down in fifth place. Now, I think I've managed to slowly reel in the fourth place car, which is the white car in front of me with the pink or red rear wheels. The yellow car, I'm not sure if that's the car that's been lapped already. I think it is. So it's a bit confusing having two cars that look almost identical, but I'm pretty sure that's not the car in the lead. Now that makes a mistake. And then we've got fourth place, me in fifth. Then I make a mistake, so that drops me back a little bit. So I let them get away a bit. But can I start to pull them back in again? But as you can see, the more sloppy you get, the more mistakes you get, the more frustrated you get. The more frustrated you get, the slower you go. And uh, there we go. <laughs> so the car is about two or three corners ahead of me and I've got to reel them in all over again. So as you can see from the times, there's just no consistency versus qualifying three. And that's what's slowing me up, making silly mistakes. And now I come around and I make a really big mistake. Now, when you roll over a four wheel drive car, if you give it a bit of gas, you can actually flip the car back over if you're lucky. And that's what happened here. But something really strange happened. Once the car landed, I came off the power so that I knew I was gonna have to turn right. 
but the car accelerated flat out straight across, straight towards Nathan Marshlin. Sorry mate, didn't mean it. It flew flat out across at him, so luckily it just missed him and then hit the uh, table and the leg and he was okay. But I think we can all learn that, yeah, maybe that's not the best technique, especially if it does weird things like that. So after that, I have no idea what position I'm in anymore and I'm pushing and then I make another silly mistake. Luckily it landed on its wheels, but now I'm just totally overdriving the car and I'm frustrated and also a little bit wary of if the car's going to do that again as this car is quite powerful, so you've got to be a bit careful with it. So now I've just got to take a bit of a breath. I've got a bit of space in front of me and I can just calm things down a little bit and just get into my routine of just doing this same lap over and over again. Now the car's behaving well and I've sort of settled down into a routine. We're now putting in two decent laps, coming around for our third one. So things have finally calmed down and we're starting to move towards the end of the race. Now there's no way I'm going to get 21 laps out of this race, but hopefully 20 is still on the cards. Now things have settled down and I put decent four laps in, we can start to look at our position and who's in front of us. Now as far as I can work out, the car that's actually in front of me in fourth position is the blue fronted car with a little bit of orange. Now he's just made a mistake and now I'm right on him. So let's see if we can hunt him down and crawl back into fourth place. Now I'm right on him, let's see if I can actually get past him or if I can get him to make a mistake so that I can steal his spot. I'm right on him now and at some parts of the track I am quicker, a little bit of a mistake there, but then the pressure and he makes a mistake and I snatch back into fourth place. Right, can I hold on to fourth place <laughs> without making too many stupid little mistakes like those two? <laughs> Now unfortunately having two cars on the track that look identical, one of them is the leader and one of them is not. So I'm not sure if that person behind me was the leader or the person that was behind me. It, even watching it back now, I'm not sure. So I'm sorry if I got in the way of the leader, but I think the leader is the car ahead of me. So there you go, fourth place and I'll be surprised, I didn't think I was going to end up in fourth, I thought I was going to end up last, there's a lot of very fast drivers and I'm not really one of them, so uh, I find myself a bit out of place, but the car is really good, obviously some real stupid mistakes in this one, but by showing you, you might learn something as well. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed that. I wanted to show some progress from when I first got the PR Racing SB401 to show you where I'm actually at right now. And the upgrades and the things that I've changed and the electronics that I fitted in it, really happy with it. The car is way outperforming my driving style and I'm having great fun with it. I've really settled into it. Lightening up the car has really helped a lot. It did feel very heavy and bulky when I first got it as I've come from driving just two wheel drive cars. But now it feels much more closer to my two wheel drive. Nimble, very fast, but obviously with a real bite and a turn in under power. You do drive four wheel drives very differently to two wheel drives, which I was quite surprised at. They have a very different style, but I really enjoy it. And I'm going to keep it as my uh, four wheel drive racing buggy for the whole of 2024. I've got more to come with this one, but I'll probably wait towards the end of the year to do a final wrap up. There is a few more upgrades that I found. The front uprights, I'll probably do those, change those to metal. And I'm tempted to try the lower arms. Might try those to see if that makes any difference at all, whether it'll actually make the car more solid so I can turn in better, I don't know, but it might be something they'll try. And then I'll do a roundup at the end of the year. Now I've still got my uh, Yokomo 870C. That's gonna be my vintage four wheel drive. That's gonna be back on the show. I'm just waiting on getting some new shocks for it. And then that will be back on the show again. The next installment, if you will, in the new Goes Racing will be two wheel drive when we go back to do the Team Associated B7. Now there's been lots of uh, stuff going on with this as people are learning where the weaknesses are and ways to work around it and how to fix it. So now I think it's the time to actually put it together, then look at upgrading it and then running it. I did see one running 
yesterday when I took this racing and it looked really smooth. So I'm really looking forward to getting this one built on the show. So it will be coming. I've got to do those two road cars first and then we'll come back to this one. Also, I need to purchase all the electronics for this. Now I do plan on putting the same electronics in this that I have in my PR racing. So we'll be going reef servo. Then I'll be going the same ESC and motor from Corsatech. So I'll fit those and I'm really chuffed with those. They're really good. I love the way you can configure it on the app and how easy it is to work with. So basically I'm gonna go with exactly what I've got here in my B7. The only kind of thing I'm thinking of changing next would be to go maybe for a more expensive Sanwa radio. Everything that's in the car is pretty high end now. So I'm quite happy with how it feels and how it drives. So maybe trying a faster transmitter might give me a little bit more precision. I don't know, just something to try after basically changing everything. Also the upgrades that I'll probably get for the team associated, the steering, uh, definitely, maybe what else? I'm not sure about changing to a shorter wheelbase. I don't even know if the B7D is a shorter wheelbase or not, like I did on the B6.4, but I'll do a lot more research into it when I build it up and then we'll take that race in. So I'm guessing you're waiting for me to say, would I recommend getting a PR Racing SB401 Type R? And I would say it's definitely worth a look. Now, a lot of people think that this might be an entry level four wheel drive buggy. It's not. This is a price point that you can get many of the big manufacturers and it's on a par with those, but because it's not got a main brand name to it, it's always going to be a bit of a struggle for them. It, and, and it's kind of unfair as the product itself, there's nothing wrong with it at all. It's right up there. It's no different. I have my B6.4 and this, yeah, there's there's nothing in it. If this had a different brand name on it, I would have believed it. So from that side, it's offering a decent product. Now in the UK, getting parts for it at the moment is pretty easy. Apart from that steering for some reason, all the other parts and upgrade bits and pieces, I managed to pick up the competition chassis instantly. And any kind of replacement parts, it's just th those steering for some reason. So yes, I can recommend it. And from a parts point of view, yes, I can still recommend it too. And from a strength point of view, yeah, it's very strong like my B6.4 was. The issue comes that if you go to your local club racing, it's much easier to get something, especially when you're new, that a lot of people have got because they'll help you more with the setups. They'll be able to guide you if you don't quite get it right of what's going wrong with the car. Whereas when I take this racing, no one else has got one. I think there was one other PR racing car there. Obviously it wasn't this one. So that's a disadvantage, especially if you're new. And that's where it's difficult to say because if you're going to get into racing, getting one of these is going to be more tricky because you have to learn the car more than getting support and help from people at your track. But if you've got a little bit more experience or you want to, you know, you just do your own thing, highly recommend them. I, you know, I think the quality is there. That's purely the downside is it's just not as mainstream in the UK as I wish it was. But then if people don't buy it, it's never going to become that that makes any sense. So if you've enjoyed the Noob Goes Racing series, don't forget to like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.